we want to give you a quick overview of the most common issues that we found on those 387 websites. So the first one was we were able to create JCR nodes via the post servlet, which would allow us to create persistent XSS or remote code execution. 83 out of, out of those 387 websites had the post servlet just uh, exposed to us, or to, to, to basically to everyone. The second one is CRXDE was exposed. Now, that's, that basically boils down to what I said before. Often what you see is they have a, d a deny on slash CRX slash DE slash index.jsp and then it stops. But if you do .jsp .css, for example, you will still be able to hit it and you will still get access to CRXDE. 85 of the 387 were, were able to access CRXDE, which is quite a huge number, seeing as what the damage you can do in CRXDE. Number eight, um, we have reflected XSS via SWF. Um, so the DOM and AEM has some endpoints that expose SWF and they can be vulner vulnerable to reflected XSS as that is executed in your browser as well. So if some malicious person would want to add some things in the URL and then send that over to potential victims, then they would have reflected XSS because of whatever is there inside the URL. Number seven, the WCM debug filter was exposed. Um, again, what we also have here is that there could be reflected XSS. Um, there's actually a very nice uh, topic about this uh, created uh, because they had an issue at Philips with this. Um, so if you have some spare time, read through it. It's really interesting to read um, if you're into some security stuff. Um, number six, the login status servlet is exposed. This means that we could potentially brute force passwords because we can just keep on hitting this and whenever we actually guess or brute force the correct password, then it will say we have authenticated with that specific user. And if we're not being, if we're not, if we don't guess the right password, then we would say authentication is false. So whenever it says something else and false, then we know that we have the correct password. Number five, the user info servlet, which is basically the same as the one before, the login status servlet, uh, which we can also use to potentially brute force passwords. And then number four is also another one of those, which is the current user servlet, um, which we can also use to potentially brute force passwords as they all expose the current user that you have with your request. So as long as it always says false or you, or you don't get the username, then you know that you don't have the right one. Once you see that you have admin, for example, then you know you have guessed or brute forced the admin password. What we see though is that, if you can see it, 127 and 128 different instances is that they always, it was pretty much always the same uh, three that were always exposed for the same website. So it was, once you had one, most nine times out of 10, you would have all three of them exposed. Number three is the query builder feed servlet. This would allow you to uh, get some sensitive data potentially from the JCR because you can just query the complete data, the, the complete JCR and get data out of it. And this would be in a RSS feed format. And then number two is again also the query builder JSON servlet, which is the same as a feed servlet, except this time you get it as a JSON format instead of a uh, RSS feed format. And again, pretty much the same numbers here except for a few um, because yeah, if they don't have one, they don't, also don't have blocked the other one. And then comes number one, the poll server itself is exposed, uh, which will allow us to have persistent XSS or RCE. And there were 185 instances, me meaning that it's pretty much half of all the tested websites had this server exposed. So we could potentially inject our own nodes into the JCR and send over links to those nodes to users and could have some XSS uh, problems with the victims.